Yeah, so, so welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. I'm looking at the apricot tree here, apricot tree, pronounce it correctly, Vasily. Anyway, this is something that I should have done earlier and I had, did announce that I was going to prune it. And as usual, it got away from me. Now, it's dropped most of its leaves. It's about to drop the rest of it in the next three or four weeks. I think I've still got a little bit of time with this one here. And what I'm referring to is pruning, getting it pruned right back and shaping it out. Uh, we, we'll need to go through a few, few things with the apricot tree. One is the most important thing to understand with the apricot is gamosas. You know, it's a bacterial that gets into the tree and causes a lot of sap oozing. So if you ever see if any of that occurring on your tree, first thing you should do is go up and scrape it and have a close look for any sawdust or any holes or any, any, any little holes or dust coming out from the branch or the actual trunk. Um, and that will be an indicator that you've got a borer in there, which has caused uh, a lot more stress. But that would only occur if the street, the tree is already stressed in the first place. Now, what causes that is high nitrogen based soil. So if you're putting a fertilizer that's high in nitrogen, it'll cause it to grow too quick. It's like high blood pressure. You can get that and it will just knock you about. And that's what happens with the apricot tree. So uh, a good balanced fertilizer like our superfood and especially the black grid with the calcium silicate will rectif rectify that for you so you don't have uh, the gamosas. But you also need to apply some sprays on it. Now in the past, this tree was going through a lot of stress. We nearly lost it. If some of you who've been following me for a few years would know that I nearly lost this tree and it's come back with a vengeance. I treated it with hydrated lime on the trunk and I haven't done it since. Only the one or two applications and it's worn off now. You can see that on the trunk. But I also did prune it in summer or late summer, early autumn. I'm about a month behind my own schedule and you can see it's dropped a lot of its foliage, which is concerning for me, but I could do one of two things here. I could sit here and wait for it to go into, into leaf mode again, growth in springtime, or I can prune it now and gamble it. But the thing you need to pay attention to are your tools as well. You need to have sharp, clean tools. A little bit of metho is vital to spray on the secateurs and you don't have to do it continuously meaning that every time you do a cut, spray it again. But it's good to actually top it up after about five or 10 cuts, just in case there is a branch that's infected or your tree is going through that stress. So attacking the tree. Well, normally I'd say to you, bring it down to height that you're at manageable height. So arms reach, for example, cut it down to there. This is in summer or late summer after you finish harvesting. But because I can see through the tree and it's still holding foliage, so it's indicating that the sap is still active, nowhere near as it was a month ago, I still may be safe enough to prune it. It's up to you guys and it, you basically you need to actually analyze your own tree. You need to see whether the tree's dropped all its leaves already. If it has, wait till August or just before springtime to give it a good prune so the sap's flowing again. And why we do that is because you need the sap active through the tree to heal any cuts that you create. You don't want to leave an open cut like that and no sap flowing through. That is susceptible to getting gamosas or the bacteria entering into the tree and just taking over the tree. So pruning it in summer or early to mid autumn, I'm about three weeks overdue, is safe or otherwise wait later. Now, if your tree's holding a lot of leaves, my one's got about 30 or 40% of its foliage still. I'm having a guess um, and I think we should be okay. Now what I've got to do is not only bring it down, but in this case, thin it out because it's, a, it's a, a nightmare of branches in here. And none of these, if any of these, I'll be lucky if any of these actually set any fruit in here. Now the fruit comes off a one, two, up to three year old branch. Anything older than that, you'll get something, but you really, and, sorry, I'm just looking at this branch and I know it wasn't here last year and it looks like it's a two-year-old if, if it's not a three-year-old branch but in fact it's probably only a one-year-old branch because most of these branches were removed so the fruit is going to come this coming springtime on whatever branch I leave behind because most of them have clocked a year and some of them a little bit green, maybe a little bit less than a year, like these little wispy things here. They aren't going to fruit for us, but down below, and these older branches is where we expect to see the fruit. So look for frass, which is sawdust, coming out of the tree. If you've got gamosas, scrape it off, paint the trunk, 
with hydrated lime, spray with a bluestone copper sulphate base, which is our disease control pack, to protect the tree and prune it and always you know, sterilise your tools between pruning stages and obviously bring it down to a manageable height. Sit back and watch me get into it. What I'm working on here folks is basically taking the height down and all these long branches, bringing them down to about 30 or 40 centimetres from where they start. Not concerned which way they're growing and what direction they're growing. The whole purpose of this is so that I can create some space to get in there. And while I'm doing that, I'm also looking for dieback. This is dieback. It's, it's like canker on the rose that you see. The same thing happens to an apricot. So we've got this little bit of dieback going on and you need to remove it below where the dieback finishes so that it doesn't continue back down towards the rest of the branch. So cut those out, look out for those. These big ones up here, look at this monster. And if you're wondering what secateurs I'm using, it's the Lowe's number one, the anvil pruners. Fantastic little tool. I don't think we've got any left online. We've ordered some, but that should be in soon. But this is what you want to use because they've got a beautiful cutting blade on them. And the action on them is a slicing action as it cuts through. So it takes away a lot of that hard yakka, you know, pressure that you need to apply to cut a big branch like that. That was at least about 12 or 15 millimetres in diameter. Now I've got another one growing right next to it. That's annoying. We've got two there. I'm going to remove one of the two. In fact, I might just do it now. I'm going to keep the older one and take that one down to the ground like that. You don't want double branches growing in the same direction and we've got a lot of that going on here. One thing I should explain here, folks, is see this branch here, for example? I'm up going up here. This monster branch is growing in. I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, no, I'm not I'm going to just cut it down to here. But let's work with this branch here, for example. All right. Now you're wondering, where's the fruit going to come on this branch here? Well, the fruit comes along the side of the branch. Unlike your apples and pears, which let's go over here for this one here. This is our Asian pear that we pruned earlier. Unlike these plants here, where the fruit will grow off a spur like that there, this little stubble, that's where the fruit will grow off. The apricot, in fact, one, two, three year old branches, it'll actually grow along the side. Maybe not the entire area, but you know, in sections of it is where you're going to get your fruit. Now you don't want a branch like this going up to the sky because you ain't going to harvest anything up there. And if you are, you're going to struggle with the ladder. So you're better off keeping it down short, wider, keeping these a little bit shorter than that, but don't cut them back. For example, let's just go here, for example. Wait, well, let's start here. Again, let's start over here. Let's work it properly. See these here? This is a pear tree. Wait a second. I haven't sprayed my bloody tools. Now you don't go from one plant to the other without spraying your tools, folks. And that's metho. You can mix a bit of water in it, but I go straight. I like it neat. Now, when we cut these back, we cut to a couple of buds like that there. Right, we bring this right back down here, like that, and here. And these here, eventually, if we cut them properly and regularly, eventually we'll start to produce fruit on these little tips here, not on this long branch on here and here and here. And that's where you get that from the apricot. Now with the apricot, you've got to work out which bloody branch you're going to keep. Oh my Lord, have a look at that. That has grown. That is nuts. I mean, we've got so many, so much growth coming out through the center here. This is because I cut it so hard that I had to revive it and then I put some black grit on it and superfood and the bloody thing's just gone mental. Now I've got to go mental on it and bring it right back down. So I've got to thin it out and hopefully it doesn't react like that again. But the tree is you know, mighty healthy. It's vibrant. Okay, no more talking. I've got to prune. No, I'm done with all these branches. Too many. Doing my head in. I'm just going to cut all the branches that grow inwards and just be done with them. I don't need so many. Just work with the outer branches. Let's open up the center so I can breathe and at least I can get inside in here and do something because it's just not practical. We've got some replacements going on here. This old one here has gone to God, gone to heaven. I haven't got my saw here, so that's going to get taken out and we may replace it. Well, it's actually better on that side. I don't need these in here. I really don't. I'm going to bring this you know what? I'm just cutting almost anywhere. Oh, that's too low. We'll cut it there for now. It's just so I can get in here at the moment. We've got this crossing. Look at that. So 
exactly that. Yeah, I mean, this will probably bring fruit, so will this, but you've got to keep one of the two. That one's going in the wrong direction, so let's get rid of that. Open it up. This has gone up to heaven. That branch has got to get cut off, so that's going to get sawn off. We've got this, this little sucker growing out of the bottom there. It's just new. Get rid of that. And bring this up down to a butt outside on a slight angle, just like that. Get rid of that. Now, that probably ain't going to give me any fruit, but whatever grows off that will. Ah, that's dead. That's for the fireplace. I've got another 200 trees out in the orchard that I've got to prune. You know, they may be not as big as this at the moment, but in about a year's time or two years' time, I'm stuffed. <laughs> I've taken the guts out of this one. Oh, yeah. Seriously? Nuts. Compl yeah, okay, Cara, what do you reckon, sweetheart? Hey, no more shade here. I've lost it, haven't I? It's okay. This will survive from what it was to a couple of almost dead limbs on this tree. It's come back and it's full growth. Now, there are still a lot of small wispy branches inside that need some attention, that need to be uh, cut off or pruned so they're not crossing over, no overlapping. You know, the one who needs the most attention here, folks, is this one here. Isn't that right? Hey, what's wrong? You want tickles? Hey, she just wants cuddles. And when I give her cuddles, this is what happens. He turns up and he pushes in. Watch this, watch this. Hey, leave her alone. Hey. Leave her alone. Now, now push your head, see, push my head away and rub her. Yeah. Are you jealous, sweetheart? Hey, what's wrong? Hey, hey, tell him off. Get him. Come on. Get him to. Don't claim me by putting your paw on my foot. This is the dog moment, folks. This is what we do in transition here. Hey, hey, get her. Get him. Get her. Who's going to go? <laughs> they love wrestling. They're big dogs. Now, Vader's 55, maybe 60 kilos by now. We haven't weighed him. She's 52 or something like that, 53. But she's broader than him. He's a slightly different frame to her. And he's getting a little bit of a brown patch on his back, the, uh, the lower part of his back there. I know I've gone into the dog mode here, folks, because I love him to death. But anyway, this is my girl, and she's my protector. And if I walk away, she can come on. No, come on, go down. No, no, don't you jump. No, you know you're not allowed to jump. Oh, this is going to be a longer segment than usual, folks. I know you don't mind the dogs, so enjoy them. Anyway, back to the apricot tree. I've taken the guts out. I've thinned it out. It's got a lot of wispy branches that I need to thin out, and I can see still a bit of dieback on a couple of the smaller ones. Here's one here, for example, I missed. That's got to get cut off. See, that, look at that curl there. For whatever, for whatever the reason, something was interfering with that, and it's caused it to curl back. So cut it back, and here's some dieback as well that I just spotted. So you've got to get rid of all that stuff. Dead disease, damage, and die, dying branches need to be come, cut off. And just continue doing that until you're happy with it. Look, the more I look, the more I find die back on this. But more importantly, oh, wait a second, I've got to keep going because I won't end up doing once the camera goes off. That's dead, and that's dead. So take, oh, wait a second, and that's dead there too. And I think that's on its way out as well. Anyway, that's what you've got to do with the apricot tree. Not the same with your pears and apples. A different slight prune to that. I've got the open vase shape. Well, this is more than an open vase shape. What do you call that? Champagne glass. It's completely open. That's how I want it. Still a few branches that I'm going to work on, but there shouldn't be really any or very few that are rubbing. And as I speak about it, there's another one that I found. So do that with your trees if you haven't done so already, folks. Prune them back, paint them with hydrated lime, and if you've got gamosas happening on it, make sure that you treat it well with the hydrated lime and the blue stone. And it's vital, the black grit, the calcium, calcium silicate, is what's gonna help this tree with a little bit of phosphate in it. It's gonna strengthen the tree, reduce the acidity level in the soil, and give it the vitality it needs to be able to grow strong without you know, bursting out into branch and leaf mode only. Unless you've done a really hard prune, that shouldn't happen. That's what happened to me last year. This year, it should settle down because there's still a lot of young growth on there, which I've left on the tree for it to be able to settle down. Now, talking about settling down, talking about settling down, folks, and pruning and exposing the tree. If you're watching it, just as we've uploaded this little video, switch over to 693 3AW Radio. That's gardening with me and Darren. And today is a very, very important day, folks. Today is the annual Naked Gardening Day. 
So the annual international naked gardening go. So what we're doing now is getting naked in the garden, folks. So get ready, because if you're going to be in the garden, you got to be naked. Wait, I forgot my jocks. Yes, I have. There we are. So <laughs> you don't want to put the camera down there, do you, mate? <laughs> Go on, I dare you. <laughs> well, let's get naked gardening. The only thing I'm going to leave on here today, folks, is my beanie. So if you're out in the garden, oh bugger, drop. There we go. Oh, one second. We got one more thing to take off. One second. There we go. There we are, folks. The only thing I've got is a beanie and a sock. <laughs> so get out there and get naked because it's the World Naked Gardening Day, folks. We're going to be talking about it on 3AW and you may see a few other guests or celebrities doing the same. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com. We've got some massive discounts this weekend. It's a naked gardening discount weekend for everybody. Enjoy the great savings at VasilisGarden.com. The secret or code word is naked. You gotta like it from Eva Silly, Maresi. Thank you.